Dry scalp is such a big topic that it takes two videos to fully cover this issue. In the last video, we went over what dry scalp is and the factors that can cause dry scalp. In this video, I'm going to go over how to test for dry scalp and the difference between dry scalp and dandruff. I'm going to end this video with recommendations on how to treat dry scalp. Testing to determine if your scalp is dry is as easy as just looking at it. Many people wrongly assume that their dry scalp condition is dandruff. It's important to understand the difference because if you proceed to treat your dry scalp with dandruff medications or shampoos, you may make your condition even worse. In order to spot the difference, it's important to understand the origin of both. Like any other skin cell, the scalp renews its cells every month or so by producing new cells underneath the old ones. Once the new cells have formed underneath, the old ones above die and slowly and unnoticeably flake away. Without proper lubrication due to things like dry weather, poor diet and water intake, overwashing and excessive sun exposure, like dry skin, a dry scalp will appear ashy and when scratched or rubbed, small white flakes will form and separate from the skin. So that white appearance you notice when someone's ashy are really dead skin cells. Dry skin is characterized with tiny white dry flakes that can get caught up in your hair strands or land on your shirt, especially if your hair is short. Dandruff is completely different. Dandruff is a result of an overproduction of a fungus that's naturally present on our scalp called Malassezia ovalis. This causes an accelerated production of the formation of new skin cells. This accelerated production of new skin cells does not give the old ones enough time to naturally flake away undetected and forces large clumps of cells to form. These clumps of skin cells mix in with the sebum on our scalp. This mixture creates large greasy flakes to form and noticeably fall off and often gets caught up in our hair strands. The oilier your scalp is, the worse the dandruff condition can become. Dandruff is usually characterized by larger, greasy, or waxy flakes of dead skin cells that are white in color. It's also characterized with an increased amount of an itchy sensation. Apart from what some may claim, there is no known cause for dandruff. It's a medical mystery. So there is a big difference between dandruff and dry scalp. So make sure to use this newfound knowledge to observe your scalp and come to a more accurate conclusion. There are more severe conditions like seborrheic dermatitis and psoriasis that are often mistaken for dandruff. These conditions are chronic and can be due to some type of autoimmune system response or plain old genetics. It has also been associated with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease in seniors. Huge giveaways to indicate that your scalp condition is something other than dandruff is the color of the flakes or if you notice patches of it on other parts of your body and of course when dandruff medications and remedies just aren't working. Seborrheic dermatitis is characterized with red irritated skin. Unlike dandruff, the clumps that form on your scalp are usually yellow in color. Seborrheic dermatitis can also cause an increased amount of hair shedding. It's even worse for animals that are suffering from this. Psoriasis is characterized with silvery clumps or patches on your scalp and often on other parts of your body like your elbows, hands, and legs. These conditions should be diagnosed by a licensed dermatologist. I would like to reiterate that oiling your scalp is never the answer for treating a dry scalp condition. Your goal should be for your scalp to function correctly and produce enough sebum on its own. Unless your dry scalp condition is due to genetics, Constantly oiling your scalp does not fix the problem, it covers it up. If you must, the most you should ever oil your scalp is once every two weeks, with a tiny amount of a light natural oil like jojoba or sweet almond oil. Use the same amount that you would use to oil your face. Frequently oiling your scalp and applying any thick oils like castor oil can clog your follicles and could create a dependency. It can even cause a scalp condition to form. If you are experiencing symptoms of dry scalp, it's important to cut down on drying activities like the use of synthetic styling products. And I know you're used to hearing this a lot, but keeping yourself hydrated by drinking plenty of water 
will work wonders on dry skin and scalp conditions. Also, limit the amount of blow drying you do. As with those suffering from excessively oily scalp, the use of pure tea tree oil is very effective with dry scalp and even dandruff. Tea tree oil stimulates blood circulation on the scalp, which helps to reboot and regulate sebum production. So your scalp can start functioning normally on its own. Its antibacterial and antifungal properties stops the overproduction of the fungus Malassezia ovalis, which is what's responsible for causing dandruff and a number of other scalp conditions to form. Simply mix a few drops of pure tea tree oil in your shampoo and wash your scalp with it. It's safe and recommended to do this every time you wash your hair. Complete measurements and directions can be found on the back of the bottle. After washing your scalp with the assistance of pure tea tree oil, performing a herbal hot oil treatment will deliver medicated herbs and an emergency ejection of moisture to your scalp and hair. I personally prefer using my herbal hot oil treatment over oiling my scalp with jojoba or sweet almond oil because it's medicated and it offers way more healing benefits than plain oils. Make sure to rub the treatment directly into your scalp and to follow the directions on the back of the bottle. Our herbal hot oil treatment has been formulated specifically as a hair and scalp treatment. After you complete this treatment, your scalp will feel awakened and tingly. It will also feel less tight and well lubricated. The scalp is a multifunctional organ. Many of us forget that anything that you put on your scalp is directly absorbed into your body and bloodstream. In fact, in many cultures and religions, exposing your scalp is looked at as exposing your body to impurities, illness, and debris. So one, it's important to quickly treat any problems your scalp may be experiencing. And two, it's important to be very selective on what you let touch your scalp. In fact, the only time I let anything touch my scalp is when I'm washing it with my tea tree essential oil and shampoo mix and when I perform herbal hot oil treatments. I know the images in this three-part series were a bit graphic, but there are many of you watching that I know are plagued with these embarrassing issues, so I hope these videos were helpful. As always, thanks for watching. Did you know that we're now on Instagram? Follow at Green Beauty Channel on Instagram and subscribe on YouTube for more videos and updates.